Hi, so I'm playing a game called Naval Action, and this is an Age of Sail, Napoleonic era um, uh, game. It's just entered um, the alpha of its open world, which is a, a multiplayer kind of persistent uh, trading and fighting area. Previously it had, um, for a long time, the uh, Sea Trials, which was ship-to-ship -ship combat, uh, kind of arcadey ship-to-ship -ship combat. And what I'm doing right now is I'm in an instanced battle, and I am just destroying this Cerberus, which is the smallest of the frigates, I think. And its job was to protect this trading ship over here, which is a trader's snow. So what I'm going to do now is, I think he's very low in the water, so I think he's probably done for. I'm going to go and take, or try and capture this... Um, this uh, trading ship and then I'll be able to take its cargo and, uh, and sell it. So what I'm going to aim to do, because the AI um, on these, this isn't player to player by the way, this is player to environment, the AI is, is pretty uh, limited so what it will always try and do is um, turn away from you. So if I sort of come past it and turn to my right, I'll be able to turn it into the wind. It's pretty much stuck in the wind right now. You can see there's a, a compass at the bottom. So I'm going to set, I'm going to reduce sail, set crew focus on boarding, and come alongside. Now you want to avoid um, colliding, if, if you can do that, because um, there's a lot of damage to the ships and the repair. Oh look, he's sunk. Where's he gone? Over there. Yeah. And the uh, the ships are fairly expensive, and the repair kits are as well. So I don't want to um, I don't want to sink him, but he's just managed to get out of the wind. So I'm gonna have to put up more sail and go back. Pop a repair kit. So the way that boarding works is you have to come alongside uh, fairly slowly and get a reasonably good. Um, uh, reasonably good contact with the side of the ship and then you'll, you'll have the option to board and there's a kind of a mini game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn. So I'm going to lock full left rudder and I'm going to scandalize the mizzen sails which are connected together, the two back sails. So that, what that does is it brings the wind, has the most effect on the front, gets me to turn. Now as I come around this side I want to scandalize the front sail a bit so that I end up almost hove to but turning like that on the spot. And you see that the if you look where the wind is coming from, it's going in the direction of the arrow, so it's pushing the back of my ship more. And if I set my, my front sail like that, it's going to spin me much faster than he can turn. And I'm shortly going to come up into the eye of the wind. Now, we're both square rigged ships, so I um, so neither of us can get particularly close to the wind. But what I can do is I can turn my back sail like that so that maybe I can tack all the way through. Since I'm here, I may as well fire at him. So what I'll do now is I'll try and get stuck in the eye of the wind, and then I'll show you about box hauling, which is quite interesting. Now I think I've already gone through, so next time. No, in fact, let's go the other way, and I'll show you. I'll show you about box line. So, so w w the aim when you're going th through, you're turning your nose through the wind. It's called tacking, um, as opposed to when you turn your nose downwind, which is which is jibing. And and with tacking, a thing can happen, which is going to happen now, which is that you miss stays, and that means that you actually your speed will reduce to zero. You'll end up not making way, and you'll and because you're not driving forward, your rudder won't have any effect. It continues to turn. So now I'm going backwards. And I'm, so what I'm going to do is reverse my rudder like this, and you'll see that the ship starts to drift the correct way because I'm moving backwards through the water. And then um, and what I was supposed to do was, was, was turn the mizzen, but I didn't do it in time, so it turned on its own. But now what will happen now is if you see that the wind is coming from the top left of the, um, of the, of the illustration at the, at the bottom corner, the bottom left corner of the screen, and its, its effect is pushing the nose of my ship round to the right. 
so I'm still I, I, I'm still on full left rudder now, which is why I've come completely hove to. So I'm going to give now full right rudder now that we're starting to make way, and even that 0 0.1 knots will start to carry the ship forward, which will give it the turning momentum that it needs. Let's see where the guy's gone in the meantime. There he is over there. Um, so one of the things that I really like about this game, um, which I've never seen before, and I don't know if it's um, intentional, is that there's no map. So if you wanted to sail from, say, English Harbour, which is in the, the uh, Windward Isles, across to, say, Cuba, it would take you probably about an hour to, to, to do that journey um, in real time, which is like maybe a week in, in game time. And there is no map. So although you can kind of cheat by making a bug report which gives you your coordinates, if you don't do that, it's possible to get absolutely hopelessly lost. And um, there's some Google Maps you can use for navigating, uh, which are very fun. Um, and um, later on, exploring is going to be a major part of the game, although that's not, not implemented yet. Uh, something else I wanted to tell you was that if you want to get into this game at the moment, um, that actually there's no um, way to buy it because during the very, very early stage of development, they said they're going to stop selling um, the game package until they are more comfortable with, with the um, state of the game. Here's boarding possible. So uh, if you do want to get involved, there's a way you can do it. You can go onto the Naval Action Forums, which are run by Game Labs. You can make an account and you can message the, um, the moderators. You can tell them um, that you want to be involved in the sea trials and they, they will let you buy the game at that point. I think it's like $40 and then you end up with a Steam kit. Okay, so here we are in the boarding mini game. I've actually never seen this before because I, I the last time I played it was a much simpler version. So I guess I have to do something which I guess could be attack. And it's I mean I think I'm gonna win anyway because I have a crew of four hundred and twenty. Yeah, I think I I think boarding lost. Oh man. Uh so yeah I, I don't know how but um has he sunk or did did he capture me? No, I, I, yeah, no, he he's, he seems to have struck his colours. He's got a white, a white flag there. So no, he's he's lost, and I've won. I'm an idiot. Okay, which makes sense because I have 420 crew, and he has he has 29. So there was uh, some other stuff I could have done: um, brace, defend, attack, musket volley, deck guns, grenades. I don't know what um, what the options there were, but we don't need to find out right now. So I'm going to. Uh, I don't need to capture it. I just can exit the, the, the scenario. So I leave leave battle. Um, battles are all instants to me, they last for an hour. And I got 7,000 gold and 210 experience, that's cool. Um, I didn't get any um, loot, but this ship, I can now um, either take command of it, which means that I would leave my ship uh, here or send it back, but I don't want to do that. I can send it to the Admiralty, which I guess will give you kind of promotion um, prospects, but in fact that's not implemented yet. I can sink it, or I can send it to any town where I have an outpost. So the only place I have an outpost is the starting city, because I haven't played very much. So I'm going to send it to English Harbour, and then I'll go back and have a look at it. Maybe it has some good stuff in it. Um, okay. So now we're going into the open world, which is um, the, 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 the non-instanced area where um, you can you can sail around. So if we look where we are now, there's some other guys around here. There's a Swedish trader's ship. We're right by Basseterre, which is French. So what I can do is, is I can head up to a neutral port. I think actually there's a neutral port down here on this island. So you can actually attack even friendly ships, but then you become a pirate. So you'll see a little bit about how the land looks here. It's, very pretty. You can actually, I think you can break free from camera here. We can, it's with the home key, and we can go and have a little look at the, uh, I don't think you're meant to be able to do this, but mouse wheel seems to speed you up. So we can have a little look at the, um, at the world up here. So it's kind of pretty little town. I mean, a lot of this stuff is a, is a placeholder. Um, I mean, when, when I started the open world, the towns were just basically grey blocks that um, said kind of town written on them. Now they're getting more detailed. But you see here we are flying around and there's quite a few guys sailing. I think you can tell if you click on someone if they're a person or, or an AI. That's an AI, but 
when you find um, a real person, you can see the character's name as well and also what rank they are. And they, they did have a, a cool thing before where um, you could have NPC crews, uh, but they've taken that out now. I don't know. I don't know quite why. But that was cool because you you could control them from within the battle screen. You give them specific orders like demast that ship or stay back or you know that kind of thing. Um, so if you're interested in um, this period of history and in, in, in fighting ships in the Aubrey Maturin books in you know Master and Commander like the, the movie as well. Um, Actually, I can't get in this way. I think I'm going to have to go. I have to head around. Where's the wind? Have to go. Um, then this is a really, really fun game. It's definitely the most engaging and accurate game of this type which I've ever played. I mean, the the early games like this were the likes of Sid Meier's Pirates, which was a really cool game. But you know, it might as well have been spaceships or you know anything. The 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 the, the reality was that the wind direction didn't really make that much difference so you very very rarely just couldn't go somewhere because of the wind or, or you'd never be in a battle and you'd be completely stuck because you didn't have the weather gauge in this that can happen and you know a lot of the the time in in, in instance battles it isn't about fighting it out because it you know you you know immediately that you can't win or the other guy knows that he can't win it's about you know player to player deciding how best to run away uh, so you can get, you know, a relatively poorer ship, but if it just can stay upwind from you and taking pot shots at you, it's actually going to do quite a lot of damage. And if it's faster than you, you can't get near it. So that there are a lot of ships in the game. Um, there are, uh, I think, about 40 different playable ships. Um, some of them are um, fore and aft rigged, but anything of any decent size is going to be square rigged. So if you see, I'm stuck in the eye of the wind now, and... I actually can't sail that way because of shallows, but um, you get the idea. And in in towns, you can't actually do anything yet. They haven't said whether or not they're intending to make any kind of, you know, wandering around in town, sneak into town type um, type you know mini game or activity. But I think it's unlikely. I think it's going to be kind of like an elite dangerous type thing where you are inside you know your ship and you can't come out you just engage with town through a menu and that's that's how it is now and there's a there's a fairly rudimentary trading system um which which is based on production and demand and um we, we that started out there's, there's different commodities with different weights that started out fairly recently and i think it's totally unbalanced at the moment so um it's super hard to find good um, deals and then you know if you can do you can make way way too much gold and you know it's disproportionate but that's that's part of what they're trying to do here I mean they spent for to take an example of balancing uh, you have different types of, of shot so you have um, cannon which is you know normal kind of hull damaging shot and demasting shot you have double which is for hull damage and um, you have um, a chain which is anti sails um, and you have um, anti-personnel shots, which is a grape or canister. I've gone to town now. And um, you, they've spent an awful lot of time getting grape right, because before, you know, you could go up to a ship and you could just remove all of its crew, and it became very unrealistic. So they're, they're balancing, you know, the, the thickness of the armor, and the, um, uh, the, the angle of, of, of instance, the location of the crew in the ship, the different zones. So it's, it's now pretty good. So here I'm back in town. Um, I've got a constitution. Um, I can um, repair this for 804 gold. Um, I can see in town that um, this is my equipment. Um, so I'm using um, 32 pound carronades on my top deck and long 24 pounders on my bottom. Uh, then um, front and back I have chasers, which are little little carronades. One's 32 pounders, one's 24. And then you have a different number of upgrades per ship. And the idea is that ships later will be tradable. If you if you buy a ship, which because I, I bought this ship, then you'll find that it has five lives, kind of five. They call it five um, endurances, but it, it, you can basically sink it five times. Um, but if you capture one, you only have one life. So that's um, uh, interesting. So. Um, then what can you do? So you can go to the shop, you can basically buy all of the cannons that, that are available in the town, you can buy different resources, oak, tea, um, different upgrades for your ship. Um, and 
and um, yeah, there's sort of resources here. So we have um, on the go a, a kind of collaborative trading sheet where we record the time, the amounts and the times of different um, different prices. And the aim there is to try and exploit um, price differences, you know, to be a merchant. But at the moment, as I say, it's not very um, very finessed. And and that's it. You can buy ships here. You can see what ships they have. They have a Santissima here. So if we wanted, we could buy the, the Santissima. That is the biggest ship in the game. It's 138 guns. Um, and they also have a Victory, which is um, based on Nelson's Nelson's flagship, the Victory. And th those are all the first rates. And we can see what, what other ships they have. Second rates. They're all very pretty. I've never seen or heard of a Pavel before. Uh, they don't have all of the ships here because, for example, there are other ships of the line between the Bologna um, and um, the Victory. There's a Bocanter and a St. Paul. Um, so there's the Bologna, there is also um, the Ingermaland, which is not here, and then there's a Constitution, which I have, which is the largest of the frigates. There are um, various other frigates, the Essex, the Trincomalee, there's a, a thing which is confusingly just called Frigate, which is a, a Russian Cherubin, um, 38 guns. The Bell Pool, the Surprise, obviously the Surprise is, is referring to um, the, the Albury Maturinship, or an army, and then the Cerberus we saw at the beginning was the smallest of the frigates. And then there's a whole load of schooners, uh, those are the ones with two masts, there's the, there's the Snow, Mercury, Navy Brig, a Brig and a Privateer. I think there's another one, I forgot. Um, there is there is a Zebek or a Polek. I haven't actually seen that yet in game, but um, apparently it's here. And then there's some other kind of fore and aft rigged uh, small small boats, yachts and cutters and, and lynxes and the like. Um, so it's it's really a very big and very complete world, um, and it is in super early stages. It is in alpha. So I would suggest that anyone who's interested in this period of history and fighting ships in general should um, should get involved. I'll put a link on the video to their forum website. Thanks.